When you give yourself to places, they give you yourself back. The more one comes to know them, the more one sees them, the more one sees them with the invisible crop of memories and associations that will be waiting for you when you come back. While new places offer up new thoughts, new possibilities. Exploring the world is one of the best ways of exploring the mind and walking travels both terrains. Fragment. Second fragment I prepared, I will try to read while walking, while the whole idea was, was taken from the 18th century walking library. Sorry. The problem is the walking library encountered, I guess they had, it, they had not walked with dogs they are, that are learning to walk on the beach, uh, on, on the liner. Mm. Right. So my second fragment from Rebecca Solnit, uh, Wanderlust, that's the book I'm currently reading and I prepared those fragments uh, that I found at this moment uh, most important for me. Although I came to think about walking, I couldn't stop thinking about everything else. About the letters I should have been writing, about the conversation I had been having at least when my mind stayed to the phone conversation with my friend that morning. I was still on track. My friend's car had been stolen from her well at West Oakland, West Oakland studio. And she told me that though everyone responded to it as a disaster, she wasn't all that sorry it was gone or in a hurry to replace it. There was a joy, she said to finding that her body was adequate to get where she was going. Fred is getting nervous for, uh, for things that are moving. Uh, there was a joy, she said, to finding that her body was adequate to get her where she was going. And it was a gift to develop a more tangible, concrete relationship to her neighborhood and its re residents. We talked about the more stately sense of time one has a foot and on public transit. <laughs> we almost had an accident, but we could have 
<laughs> we managed to avoid it. We talked about the more stately sense of the time. One has a foot and on public transit, where things must be planned and scheduled beforehand, rather than rushed through at the last minute. And about the sense of place that can only be gained on foot. Many people nowadays live in a series of interiors. Home, car, gym, office, shops, disconnected from each other. On foot and everything stays connected. For a while, walking one occupies the spaces between those interiors in the same way one occupies those interiors. One lives in the whole world rather than in interiors built up against it. to my mom watching One last stop, I will try to read my last fragments that I prepared today, or maybe not. Okay, we can go downstairs, let's go. try to do now the last fragments with a view oh no there is no more view for Warsaw but we're still in Warsaw at the Vistula river okay so I will try to do one fragments Fred is going to do it well. he will get it for sure hopefully before he will not see any duck or anything moving let's see let's have a try Okay. Anyway, I will still try. A lone walker is both present and detached from the world around. More than an audience, but less than a participant. Walking assages or legitimizes the alien this alienation. One is mildly disconnected because one is walking not because one is incapable of connecting. Walking provided Kierkegaard, like Rousseau, with a wealth of casual contacts with his fellow humans, and it is facilitated contemplation. Thank you for joining us for the walk. Hope you enjoyed. We will keep continue walking next four times. Uh, around Warsaw, around suburbs of uh, Warsaw and uh, as well in the city center. This is my routine uh, that appeared now as I am taking care for Fred, where, wherever he is, right? <laughs>